Congratulations on your purchase of the Teeter EP560 inversion table. If you have any questions or need any help along the way, don't hesitate to contact Teeter customer service at the number on your screen or visit teeter.com support for live chat assistance. For the best user experience, it is critical that you follow the assembly instructions and read and fully understand the user guide attached to the equipment before inverting. Please read the following warnings and all instructions before using your EP560 inversion table. Before getting started with assembly, first unpack and prepare your workspace. If possible, assemble the equipment at or near the space in which you intend to use it to avoid moving it later. Unpack all parts and support materials. Set aside packing materials and clear your work area. Locate the hardware kits packaged with the small parts bag. They are labeled to correspond with the assembly process. Step 1. Assemble A-frame and handles. On a level surface, position the A-frame so that it is standing upright and the stability feet are on the ground. Gently push down on the spreader arms to ensure they are fully open and in the locked position as shown. Look for temporary circular assembly assistance labels on the A-frame. Right, left, front, and rear indicate your position while using the equipment, not facing it. These labels can be removed easily upon completion of assembly. Use the handle assembly hardware kit to assemble the handles. Determine the left or right handles marked with an embossed L or R on the inside of the black plastic part of each handle. Align the black plastic part of the corresponding handle over the outside edge of the hinge plate on the A-frame. Insert and hand tighten three Allen head bolts through the hinge plate into the handle. Repeat with the other handle. Proceed to tighten all fasteners with the five millimeter Allen wrench, being careful not to over tighten. Step two, assemble table bed. Note, do not detach the bed frame extension from the clips as you proceed. Lay the upper and lower table bed parts face down on the floor. Lift the base of the bed frame extension to fit the lower table bed into the plastic track of the upper table bed. Use the table bed hardware kit to assemble the table bed. Align the bolt holes of the upper part of the frame, the triangle shaped area, to the bolt holes on the upper table bed. From beneath the upper table bed, insert the two short bolts through the table bed frame and the bed frame extension loops. Hand tighten a nut to the end of each bolt. From beneath the upper table bed, insert the long bolt through the lower bolt hole of the table bed. Hand tighten a nut to the end of the long bolt. Proceed to tighten the three nuts using the 10 slash 13 millimeter open ended wrench and five millimeter Allen wrench. Step three, assemble roller hinges to table bed. Familiarize yourself with the three hole roller hinge and cam lock terms. The roller hinges control the responsiveness or rate of rotation of the inversion table. There are three holes. The hole selection depends both on your body weight and your preferred angle of inversion. The A setting is the top hole closest to the pivot pin, B is the middle hole, and C is the bottom hole. Determine your recommended hole selection using the chart shown. Your roller hinge setting and balance may vary depending on your body weight distribution. Please refer to the user guide for troubleshooting. For ease of assembly, rest the table bed against the crossbar at the front of the A-frame. On one side of the table bed, lift and hold the cam lock up all the way to unlock. In your other hand, hold one roller hinge near the pivot pin. With the pivot pin facing out, away from the table bed, slide the bottom of the roller hinge between the cam lock and the bracket in the same direction as the arrow label located inside the cam lock. Tip, make sure that the cam lock is completely open when inserting the roller hinge, otherwise assembly will be more difficult. 
Engage one of the holes in the roller hinge over the bracket pin. Push down on the cam lock to lock it and secure the roller hinge. Repeat on the other side. Make sure the roller hinges are in the same hole setting on both sides. Step four, assemble table bed to A-frame. Face the front of the A-frame where the crossbar is located. Grasp both roller hinges right above the cam lock and lift the table bed. Allow the top of the table bed to rotate toward the floor so that the back of the table bed is now facing you and the top of the table bed is in front of the crossbar. Lower each roller hinge pivot pin into the A-frame hinge plates one side at a time. The self-locking hooks will open to allow the pivot pin into the hinge plate slot, then automatically snap closed over the pivot pin. Tip, you may need to push outward on the hinge plate in order for the second pivot pin to lock in place. Make sure that each pivot pin is seated at the base of the slot in the hinge plates and that the self-locking hooks have closed over both pivot pins. Rotate the table bed so that it is facing up. Ensure that it rotates smoothly. Step five, assemble ankle comfort dial. Use the ankle comfort dial hardware kit to assemble the ankle comfort dial. Slide the ankle comfort dial bar with pre-assembled ankle comfort dial into the hole at the front base of the main shaft. The ankle comfort dial is designed with a high and low setting. Position the pre-assembled dial in the low setting, screw holes facing up, for ease of assembly. Slide the separate ankle comfort dial onto the ankle comfort dial bar and align the screw holes. Tip: To assist with assembly, repeatedly rotate the ankle comfort dial while pushing it onto the ankle comfort dial bar. Secure with a screw and tighten with the screwdriver provided. Note, please refer to the user guide for a complete description of the ankle comfort dial settings. Step six, assemble rear ankle bar. With the Ergo Embrace logo facing up, insert the rear ankle bar with the pre-assembled ankle cup into the hole at the base of the main shaft. Use the rear ankle bar hardware kit to assemble the ankle bar. Insert one bolt from the rear of the main shaft to secure the rear ankle bar and fasten with the washer and nut. Proceed to tighten using the 10 13 millimeter open-ended wrenches. With the Ergo Embrace logo facing up, slide the separate ankle cup onto the open end of the rear ankle bar. Tip, to assist with assembly, repeatedly rotate the ankle cup while pushing it onto the rear ankle bar. Fit the rubber plug into the open end of the rear ankle bar. Tip, you may want to use a rubber mallet to assist with assembly. Secure the rubber plug with the screw using the screwdriver provided. If the screw does not tighten easily, you may need to reposition the alignment of the rubber plug. Step seven, assemble front ankle bar. Pull the T-shaped locking pin to disengage from the front ankle bar. Without overstretching the spring inside, fully pull out the front ankle bar. Rotate the front ankle bar 90 degrees so the eight adjustment holes face up toward the T-shaped locking pin. Ensure the set screw slot is not facing up as shown. This slot should face downwards toward the ankle comfort dial. Allow the spring-loaded front ankle bar to insert all the way. Then release the T-shaped locking pin to engage in the first hole setting. Use the front ankle bar hardware kit to finish assembling the front ankle bar. Hand tighten one screw through the base of the front ankle bar housing into the set screw slot. Proceed to tighten with the five millimeter Allen wrench. With the Ergo Embrace logos facing up, slide the remaining two ankle cups onto each side of the front ankle bar. Insert the rubber plugs into the open ends of the front ankle bar. Hand tighten two screws through the front ankle bar into the inserted rubber plugs. Proceed to tighten with the screwdriver. Step eight, assemble main shaft to table bed. Stand on the left side of the A-frame 
holding the main shaft with the height markings facing up. Begin to slide the end of the main shaft into the main shaft housing at the base of the table bed. With your right hand, pull out the height selector locking pin and slide the main shaft in further. Release in the desired height setting. Refer to the user guide for more information on selecting your height setting. The main shaft must rest against the crossbar of the A-frame. Important, the crossbar prevents the table bed from rotating forward when the user steps on the ankle cuff or dial. Miss assembly check. If your inversion table looks like image A, this demonstrates that the roller hinges have been assembled upside down into the table bed and must be corrected. Go back to step three for instruction. If your inversion table looks like image B, this demonstrates that the table bed has been assembled into the A-frame backwards, so the main shaft is not resting on the crossbar and must be corrected. Go back to step four for instruction. If your inversion table looks like image C, this shows correct assembly and you can proceed to step nine. Step nine, attach angle tether and head pillow. The tether will come pre-assembled to the A-frame. Unfold the adjustable tether and clip it to the U-bar on the underside of the table bed. Slide the buckle to lengthen or shorten the strap depending on your desired maximum angle of inversion. To attach the head pillow, locate the slots at the top of the table bed just beneath the handhold as shown. Insert the two pointed ends on the back of the head pillow into the slot of the table bed and pull through from the back of the table bed to secure the pillow into position. Step 10, attach the optional lumbar bridge. The lumbar bridge provides even deeper decompression and improved alignment benefits. Personalize the intensity and target zone of the lumbar bridge by adjusting the height and position of the arch within the slots on the table bed so it fits comfortably at the small of your back. Stabilize the inversion table to prevent rotation during assembly. Position the bridge with the Teeter logo at the base and facing toward you. First, insert the bottom two notches of the bridge into the desired horizontal slots on the lower portion of the table bed. Bend the bridge to the arch height you desire and insert the top notches into the corresponding slots on the upper portion of the table bed. Modify the positioning and arch height as needed. Note, long-term storage of the lumbar bridge in a high arch setting may result in distortion of the shape and ability of the bridge to move to lower arch settings. Store in its flat position when not in use. Use of the lumbar bridge may impact the rotation of the table. Set the angle tether to a moderate inversion angle and use a spotter until you are able to find the correct balance settings and are comfortable with the operation of the table. Start in a lower level arch setting and work your way up. If you feel any discomfort, lower the setting until you are comfortable or discontinue use. The lumbar bridge works between intermediate to moderate inversion. Full inversion moves the body away from the table bed and will reduce the effectiveness of the bridge. Step 11, attach the optional acupressure nodes. Personalize the intensity and target zone of the acupressure nodes by positioning the varying sizes along the bed tracks as desired. Determine your desired node position along the table bed. Unscrew the black backing from the node and insert the backing into the slot from the rear of the bed so the threads are visible from the front. Twist the node clockwise into the backing to secure. Do not over tighten to avoid damaging the node. Repeat as desired with additional nodes. To shift node placement within a track, simply loosen the backing and slide the node in the slot. Start with the smaller nodes and work your way up to the larger ones. The ideal placement of the nodes depends on where your muscle tension points align with the slots in the table bed. The pressure of the nodes will vary as the table rotates up or down. The nodes work best between intermediate to moderate inversion, 20 to 45 degrees. Full inversion moves the body away from the table bed and will reduce the effectiveness of the nodes. 
while inverted, stay at a static incline to maintain a steady pressure or oscillate for a massaging action. Use of the nodes may cause muscle soreness if you feel any discomfort, decrease, or discontinue use. Refer to the user guide attached to your EP560 inversion table. This is your step-by-step -step guide to customizing your user settings for a smooth and effortless inversion experience. If the user guide is not already attached, secure the chain to the A-frame through the designated hole in the hinge plate. Allow the user guide to hang freely on the outside of the A-frame spreader arm so it doesn't interfere with the rotation of the table bed. Once attached to the A-frame, do not remove the user guide. It should remain permanently attached to your inversion table to serve as a reference for all users in regard to proper adjustment and use of the equipment. Congratulations, your EP560 is now fully assembled. If you have any questions or need any help along the way, don't hesitate to contact Teeter Customer Service at the number on your screen or visit teeter.com support for live chat assistance.